Yeah, not bad, not bad. Leo, not bad. How are you doing? All good, all good, man. How's it? How's your week been going? It's been okay. It's been okay. I've been trying to break up the days with um I've been doing more of the uh the cold plunge. The cold plunge, yes, yes. For those that don't know the cold plunge, t- tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so it's basically uh because you might inspire other coaches to to get involved. Yeah, but there's a lot I of wouldn't recommend it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, uh, there's a lot of like health benefits to it i'm no you know no doctor or anything like that but i i feel good i feel great after it it's a little bit nerve-wracking beforehand yeah. but it helps with you know things like recovery um i like to do it it breaks up the day for me yeah. so after this i'm probably going to uh, hit the cold plunge and uh and and yeah be nice and uh nice and frosty <laughs> nice. but tell us tell us what what is it though what is it you do the workout and then what is a plunge because a lot of people might not know what it is yeah so you you basically just get into cold water you know you get into cold water and um that's pretty much it and you you go in there for about you know um at least two minutes i'm in there for about three minutes i've had enough after that time and uh and yeah no it's good it's it's uh the way I do it, it's um, at the at the gym we've got it's like a barrel and it's got a uh, circulating water system, so it keeps it nice and cold for 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 pretty all all the time. So it's I think it's at around three degrees, um, which which is is pretty pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> and for for those watching, uh, Andrew is in London, so he's not he's not anywhere tropical where it's really <laughs> hot outside and you want to get into a plunge. It's like cold a cold uh cold country um yeah nice yeah. So, so andrew before we get into t- to what we're going to talk about today um tell us a little bit about what's your what's your day-to-day uh, what's the day-to-day life of an accountant Oof. okay so for me i can only go speak speak you know about my experiences as, as an accountant so the morning the morning is for me i go to the gym in the morning that, yeah. that I start off the day going to the gym, clears my mind, um, and then come back, um, have something quick to eat, and then that's when I start the working day. I usually start the the day with quite technical work, so doing the bookkeeping, doing the account accounts work, following up on you know emails and things like that. And then in the afternoon, what I do is I usually um, obviously after the the cold plunge. <laughs> Uh, keeps, some keeps you sharp yeah exactly exactly because um yeah and then in the afternoon i usually uh save that time for uh you know client meetings prospective client uh calls video calls podcasts and things like that good good like that it's it's good you shared that and i wanted you to share that because a lot of coaches uh, when I speak to them, they don't know what to do with their day to day. They like wake up and kind of go with the flow. But having structure, I feel like it's really important um, to what you're doing. Yeah, no, definitely. And look, it's 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 something that I um, you over time, it's just one of those things you develop and you play around with uh, with the schedules. And for me, this is something that I'm um, yeah happy with at the moment. But obviously, there's going to be days where, as you know. Last week there was, a, or two weeks ago there was a accountancy conference over two days. Yeah, and that obviously just completely changes your your day, your routine. And, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So it's just trying to fit those in as well. But um, but yeah, that's the usual day to day anyway. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, Andrew. Well, today it's going to be a little bit different to what we normally do, right? Today, um, we've got well over the last week. We've had a lot of coaches that have sent us in questions for you. Ooh. So I thought it would be a good way for us today to get those questions out there so that you can answer them. And any coach that is watching that sent us the question, uh, you'll be able to to answer us. So I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit today. Okay. All right. I'm going to test your accounting skills. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. <laughs> How does that sound? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Far away. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll start with the first question. Now, some some of these coaches haven't put their name on them. They've just literally sent me the emails. So I'll just say coach one, coach two, coach three. Um, Okay, so the first question for you, Andrew, from coach one, 
Okay. okay. Is what type of business structure is most advan advan advantageous when starting? Okay. So good question. But what I would say is in this context, it really depends on where you're starting out, you mm -hmm. know? So for example, the answer is different depending on the, the situation of that particular coach. Yeah. Uh, let me give you, let me give you a couple of scenarios here. So let's say you've got a coach and they have, they are part-time doing part-time employment work, mm. you know, and they want to start building their sports coaching business may make more sense to go on, go so trader first for the first year, see how it develops and then go into it as a limited company. Now, the reason I say that is obviously the cost side of it, the administrative yeah. side of it. And also they may want to test it. You know, I get a lot of, you know, I get a lot of new businesses and a lot of the time, you know, sometimes what can happen is depending on the situation, they may, after about six months, they do full time. Mm -hmm. And they can't sustain their business, you know. So it's it's a conversation which I have with the business owner to see what their goals are, yeah. Because that will help determine what the best business structure is. Another mm -hmm. example is let's say, for example, they've left their they've left their um, their employed job. They've got you know a bit of savings, and they really want to take their sports coaching business seriously, and they want to see it to the end. Mm -hmm. That may be a good scenario where you will just you know, incorporate straight away. Okay. Um, so it really does depend on on the, um, the the personal circumstance of the business owner. Let's say, for example, it's a number of sports coaches coming together, then that will lean towards more the uh, limited company side because mm -hmm. then you can set them up as directors and, and equal shareholdings, making things a lot cleaner. That side, they can do a partnership, but you know, I don't really, I personally, I don't really deal with partnerships, limited yeah. companies, you know, especially when you start dealing with a number of directors, the whole liability uh, comes into play a lot cleaner just to do it on a, on a limited company. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea, but it really depends on the background of the sports coach. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So coach A, hopefully that, that has answered a, uh, your question right the second question and this is he this coach has left his name he's coach james and he's in manchester is how can i effectively budget and forecast for my business okay yeah so i guess on a simple on a simple note you want to create a what's called like a simple cash flow so what you want to do is depending on what do, do we know if if this person has uh, accounting software or are they using spreadsheets, anything on that side? Hasn't said. Okay. So what I would say is first start off with the amount of money that you can play around with. Mm -hmm. Right? What you what what your what your budget is. Yeah. Right. You're gonna start off with that. Then you're gonna start calculating what your outgoings and incomings are. Now, what I would do is first start off on a historic basis. So, do you know? Do we know when he started, or is you know any information on that? Or he put less than a year ago. Less than okay, brilliant. So he's got some data of about a year. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I would say is have that historic data, and then what you're going to do is look from now to next month, and following that pattern, start putting in your outgoings and mm. whatever you're coming in. Now, you're all as a business owner, you're going to know if there's going to be any new clients and you clients coming in, or is there anything, um, any outgoings? Are you thinking of maybe buying some equipment? You've got yeah. to account for that as well. And then start doing it on, you know, month now to let's say month plus one. So next month, mm. and then keep doing that. Do that for the next six months do it for the next year and then see how you go and then see how what you end up with in terms of your figures then you can start 
making decisions on when to buy equipment, when to invest in equipment. Now, what I would say as well is review this. Mm -hmm. Review this at least every month, yeah. depending on, on the changes, and review that that forecast. Um, and what else would I say on that? Yeah, I think start off with that. It gives you a better idea of what things will look like. Now, the more you project in the future, so let's say, for example, if, you know, if you're projecting six months in advance, if you're projection, projecting 12 months, the projections become less and less accurate the more into the future you go, for yeah, obvious yeah. reasons, because you can't determine certain things. But that's how I would stay. Uh, that's how I would start off is use historic and then from what you decide to do in terms of buying equipment, add that stuff on uh, month by month. And that should give you a good idea of what your figures will look like um, for the future. Fantastic. All right, James. Well, I hope that has answered your question. Right. The next one, I don't have a name, uh, but the email says, what are tax implications when scaling a business? Oh, OK. So. So this is, there's, when you scale a business, depending on your cash reserves, if you scale, then more, most likely is you're going to be, there's going to be some investment costs mm -hmm. when you scale up. So what that might look like will be additional staff. You might, you may subcontract, you may take on, you may consider investing in some subscriptions maybe booking booking systems and things like that so initially when you start scaling you're going to have an initial uh you know just just costs now what that does is that would essentially reduce your your profit yeah. your taxable profit over time what would happen from those initial investment costs, you're going to start, you know, you may invest in, in marketing, for example, marketing campaign. Yeah. You've got to take all those things into account. What's going to happen then, it's going to actually lower your net profit. So you're going to be looking at, when you start planning for, you know, your tax year end, you're going to be looking at actually paying less tax because you're investing more in your business. Mm -hmm. But then the year after, you're going to, ideally see a growth yeah you're going to see a growth so what i would say is put some cash aside to account for any additional profit um any profit you're going to make because on that increased profit you're going to be pay, paying some sort of tax so those are going to be the, the general kind of tax implications initially it's going to be it's going to actually reduce your profit which means it's going to reduce your tax because you're going to be investing a lot into the business yeah and then over some time maybe six months 12 months down the line you're going to start seeing some growth that's actually going to increase your profit mm -hmm. and then you're going to start um paying a bit more tax after that so that's kind of how it would generally look okay fantastic right next question is from andy who is in london he says he's looking to start a football coaching business and he wants to know what are the best accounting softwares to use okay yeah so this is your ex this is your uh this is your area man yeah it's just, <laughs> you know what it's, uh, there's so much there's so much to really talk about on this i would say any of the leading any of the leading so first of all see who he banks banks with mm -hmm. we have to see what his budget is as well it, got, it kind of goes back to what we're talking about in terms of what the structure of the business is going to look like. Because depending on what the goals are of this business owner, we may go, okay, if you, for example, if you bank with the likes of NatWest, for example, then the easier route, route would be to go with free agent. Because free agent, you can actually get a free accounting software package with that okay so it really depends on, on who he banks with another thing as well is what are his goals does he want to really expand does he want to get employees is he looking for maybe international 
um, you know, income if he's doing it online. If he's going to have a different a number of different revenue streams, I would say go towards the zero likes of things, uh, QuickBooks, things like that. If it's quite simple, stay with free agent. If he if he banks with NatWest already, stay with free agent. Depending on depending on his budgetary um, kind of concerns, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll look at that. But the big ones are good. The big ones are good. Free agent have got really good support. If he wants to do it, another thing as well is a question I would ask is how much support does he want to have, right? So with free, if he wants to do things alone by himself, free agent may be the way to go because not only is it cost effective, but they've actually got quite a lot of support. It's not to say your zeros and your QuickBooks haven't got support, but mm. because it's a little bit, because those accounting softwares help larger businesses, you do need a, you know, a zero advisor, i.e. an accountant, to, to help navigate certain things there. So uh, that's what I would say. It, yeah, so I guess it depends. <laughs> In short. Okay. Okay, fantastic. All right, and the next question, this one is a, is a really good one. This one's from a coach. I don't know his name, but he's in Bournemouth. And he says, I've had a, an accountant for the last two years. I feel like he's overcharging me. Uh, what is a, or how do I let him know that I won't be needed in, needing his services anymore? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, I would say before you contact your accountant, you know, about that and letting them know that you're, you're off. <laughs> You want to have, you want to be speaking with accountants beforehand. You want to have an idea of what they can offer you, yeah, and at what price point as well, at what what fee levels. So first thing I would say is, okay, if you believe, if you think that your accountant isn't providing that information, I think the first thing would have a conversation with the accountant saying, I just want to be clear of what services you provide to me because sometimes. Client, uh, accountants can get complacent have that conversation with them and just review that type of relationship you have with them yeah. you know if it's a relationship where you don't really speak to them very often then maybe that conversation doesn't even have to be had you mm -hmm. can then go straight on to the second step which is looking for other accountants seeing what they provide and seeing what you want you know a lot of the times Business owners, especially if they've been for an, with an accountant for many years, they don't actually know what value accountants and bookkeepers can actually provide them, yeah. right? And so go and speak to them and then start getting what fees, what the fees will look like. Mm -hmm. And then if you're happy with a number of accountants that you would like to go with, that's the conversation you have with your old accountant and say, look, I want to, um, I, I'm looking for another accountant. What I would say is the best time, the best time for that is end of year, ideally, end of year, depending on how they charge you as well, depending on how they charge you, because they may charge you in arrears. So, so for example, let's say your end of year is 31st of March, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you have to submit your accounts uh, in December. They may start doing your accounts in October yeah. and then charge you once the work's done. Right. Okay. They may do it that way. Or what they may do is they may charge you a monthly fee for every um, for every month that they're doing that you the books and the accounting fees. So depending on how their fee structure is really depends on when the best time to leave. But in general, I would say the best time to leave is the end of the um, the end of your accounting year, because there's a clean cut there. If you're doing it part way especially if you're if you've got things like payroll um that can be a bit of an issue as well because payroll is a monthly thing yeah you don't really want to change over like part way through the month vat as well um so so yeah i would say end of the um accounting period is is ideally the the best way to have a, a clean break fantastic all right andrew i thought you that you did well i thought you did yeah well. <laughs> okay thank you um, right. Well, thanks for all the all the coaches that sent in questions. If you do have any questions that you want to ask, uh, send them to my email, makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. And we'll get them live to Andrew and uh, we can do another Q&A 
with you, Andrew, answering answering these questions. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks again. And I'll see you again on the next one. Enjoy the All plunge. Right. Yeah, yeah, I will do. Take care, Leo. Thanks. <laughs>